Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. It's nice to see these people that had really close ties with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein have to pay a price of some sort. Now, we know that we haven't had much justice as far as the criminal system goes. But there have been some social consequences and some professional ones. We know that Glenn Dubin had to step down. We know that Les Wexner had to step down. We know that Prince Andrew had to take a step back as well. And in our story tonight, we have another one of these members of so-called polite society who is being forced to take a step back and move away from a company that they created. And the person we're discussing is Scott Borgerson. You know, the guy that's allegedly Ghislaine Maxwell's husband? Yeah, the same guy. He's been forced to now step back from the company that he founded, that he created, because, well, he's a distraction, folks. The company doesn't want to answer questions about Scott Borgerson and his marriage to Ghislaine Maxwell, the world's largest bipedal serpent. I mean, imagine you're part of this company, you're his partner or you're a shareholder or whatever it may be, and you find out that this dude who's supposedly going to lead you folks into the promised land, make money hand over fist, make you a profitable company, has such poor judgment that they decide not only to bed but to wed Ghislaine effing Maxwell. The only thing that surprises me is that they didn't make him kick rocks earlier, right? The fact that he's <laughs> he, it took this long after the revelations came to the surface about him and Ghislaine Maxwell. That's what's really surprising. But here we are. And another scalp has been taken for their role in Jeffrey Epstein's atmosphere. And Scott, Scott Borgerson knew the score, right? He knew the scoop. He knew the deal. He understood that Ghislaine Maxwell wasn't some shrinking violet, wasn't somebody who was along for the ride. She was a participant. She was a co-conspirator. And in fact, if you listen to what everybody who knew her and everybody who was around her and Jeffrey Epstein have to say, She also was in a leadership role. So Scott Borgerson, for whatever reason, thought it would be a good idea to leave his wife, his kids, his family, and hook up with Ghislaine Maxwell. I don't even know what to say about that, honestly. I watched this documentary on Netflix last night about this lady, Shanann Watt. And her husband is kind of was, was like that too, right? This guy, well, he ended up killing her and her two kids. But he's just like a, a sociopath, right? Who the hell leaves their kids, leaves their family, does something like that to their family for somebody like Ghislaine Maxwell? And when I was looking, when I was watching that documentary and then I was looking at video of Borgerson, they have like that same kind of weird ass, like snaky ass look in their eyes. It's just, they're creepy. People are just weird these days, folks. Things are really going off the rails, right? Everywhere you look, shit is going ham. And, you know, a guy like Scott Borgerson, who was in a position of power the way he was and in a position of responsibility to other people around him, partners, shareholders, etc. He can't have this kind of stain hanging over his head, right? So, he's paying the, the price now. He has to leave his position at his company. And guess what? I don't feel one bit of pity for him. He made his own bed. He knew what Ghislaine Maxwell was, and he chose to discard his family and be with her instead. Our article today is from The Daily Beast. The author is Kate Bricklett. And the headline is, Ghislaine Maxwell's boyfriend resigns from his tech startup. And I guess we could interchange boyfriend or husband, right? It's alleged that he is her husband. So I don't know one way or the other. I can't prove it, right? I wasn't at the wedding. It's not like I'm Ghislaine Maxwell. I don't get invited to, you know, the Clinton weddings or anything like that. So I can't confirm it with my own eyes or anything. But 
there are a lot of strong sources that have come out and said that Borgeson and her are, in fact, married. So let's see what the great Kate over at the Daily Beast has to say. Ghislaine Maxwell's boyfriend, Scott Borgerson, resigned from his tech startup so he wouldn't be a, a distraction to the Boston-based company. Yeah, probably a good idea, like I was saying. You know, if you have this hanging over your head and I'm your partner, you better believe we're going to have a hard conversation. We're going to have ourselves a nice hard talk and we're going to do what's best for the company and not what's best for you. And a lot of these guys who have started these companies, these startups, um, these companies that were small, that grew into these huge, gigantic things like Les Wexner and L Brands or uh, Highbridge and Glenn Dubin, you know, it's hard to pry these things away from these people. We all know how power hungry they are and all of their moves are made to consolidate that power. So when they're faced with one of these decisions where their hand is basically forced because of their relationships, well, it has to be really tough on them, right? And we all know how narcissists roll. The entrepreneur's ties to Maxwell, who faces trial next summer in connection to Jeffrey Epstein's sex ring, have continued to make headlines since her July 2nd arrest. Indeed, Borgerson is speculated to be Maxwell's secret husband, whom she reportedly refused to identify to prosecutors. And you remember when that was all breaking, when we were covering that, you know, they, they broke the news that she was married in her hearing and that was basically the first we ever got a whiff of it. And then things have snowballed since then. Obviously, people dug back and they were looking at articles and different situations where Borgerson and Ghislaine Maxwell were together. And they have been palling around for quite some time, right? Very close. And it's rather obvious to anyone paying attention anyway that Borgerson is this secret husband that nobody knows about. Shipping industry publication Tradewinds first reported on Borgerson's exit as CEO of Cargo Metrics Technologies, the data analytics firm he founded in 2010. So his disgusting judgment, his need, want, whatever it may be to be with Ghislaine Maxwell has cost him everything that he built. And guess what? You reap what you sow. Sometimes you make your bed and you have to lie in it. And we're at that point with Borgerson, right? You can't be living with her in the house in New Hampshire and co-residing with her and being uh, allegedly married to her and not think there's going to be any slapback, any blowback. Did they really believe that Ghislaine Maxwell was never going to face justice here? I don't know how anyone could believe that after the cries that we had seen from the public, after the precedent that had been set with Nexium and with R. Kelly, there was just no doubt in my mind that eventually, at some point, Ghislaine Maxwell would get arrested. And Scott Borgerson's of the world, the guys that were so confident that it wouldn't happen, so confident in their connections and their, their power and their money, well... They're singing a different tune now. The whole entire narrative has changed. Cargo Metrics confirmed Borgerson's departure in a statement to the Daily Beast, which read, in part, We are enormously grateful to our founder, Scott Borgerson, who resigned as CEO and from his seat on the board in late July to ensure his presence would not become a distraction from the work he believes in so deeply. And that's their, all their excuses, right? Oh, I'm resigning because I want to spend more time with my family. Or I'm resigning because I don't want to be a distraction. Or I'm resigning because any other reason besides the real reason. And that real reason is the relationship to Epstein. Now, we know that Jess Staley is on his way out as well because of his relationship with Epstein. And to be honest with you, there are a lot of other people that need to do the same exact thing or th the demand needs to be made because the people that were closest to Epstein, those are the people I'm talking about and these are people that facilitated his crimes. And when we're talking about Borgerson, he was harboring Ghislaine Maxwell and helping her move from safe house to safe house if the stories can be believed. 
So yeah, again, I have no pity for him. I have no empathy for him. And I don't care that the company and the rug that he built it on was pulled out from under his feet. Choose better friends. The company said longtime president and chief operating officer Jess Scully would replace Borgerson. Survivors and their lawyers have long accused Maxwell of recruiting, grooming, and abusing girls for Epstein. And not only just survivors at this point, we have witnesses talking about it, and we have these police reports and the charges that have been laid at her feet. So this isn't just baseless. This isn't just, you know, oh, well, it could have happened. It's Guess what, folks? This many girls coming forward with the same stories. None of these girls knew each other. None of that stuff. All of a sudden, they just happened to concoct the same story decades uh, after each other in some, uh, some cases. I'm sorry. I don't believe that. What I believe and what I think happened is that Maxwell is guilty as charged, that Maxwell was involved from the very beginning in forming this sick, sordid, disgusting, sex trafficking, money laundering, Lord knows what else ring. And she should face the stiffest of stiff penalties for that role. After Epstein's jailhouse suicide, allegedly, in August 2019, the press began to hunt for the 58-year-old British socialite in earnest, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, and bipedal serpent, The Daily Mail tracked Maxwell to a Massachusetts mansion where she was holed up with Borgerson before she purchased a luxurious New Hampshire hideout under an anonymous LLC. And remember when that when that broke, right, when the Daily Mail was talking about how she had been spotted at Manchester by the sea, that was totally plausible. It always had been. Now, I never figured it would be with someone like Scott Borgerson that she was shacked up with. Right. But. Manchester by the Sea is a very affluent community, the type of place where Ghislaine Maxwell could still feel like she's among, you know, so-called polite society, and she's basically hiding right in plain sight. And it's, that's another reason why I, I don't think that the FBI ever lost track of her. I always thought, that the, I always think that the, the, the FBI had an eye on Ghislaine Maxwell for whatever reason, either be it they were going to, who knows, uh, uh, prosecute her or something else. Maybe she still had some protectors or whatever it may be. Look, at like, like I always say, at this point in this case, it's hard to rule anything out until there's evidence ruling it out, right? Because how many twists and turns and crazy corridors have we stumbled down as we've co- co- come through this case, as we've uh, followed this case? Borgerson, 45, did not return a message left by the Daily Beast. He's been linked to Maxwell since at least 2014 when he attended an intimate dinner with her at his Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, that included former President Clinton. And we dis- we discussed that dinner as well. And it's pretty funny that Borgerson and Ghislaine Maxwell would get an invite to that dinner, huh? Out of all the people that live in Los Angeles and the surrounding areas. Why would Ghislaine Maxwell and Scott Borgerson get that invite? Doesn't make sense to me, right? If they're just acquaintances, if Bill Clinton had only met Jeffrey Epstein a couple of times and only seen him a couple of times, what would prompt them to give Ghislaine Maxwell of all people that kind of invite? It makes zero sense to me. And then you add that, add on top of it, Scott Borgerson, who is basically a nobody for Clinton, right? Clinton's a heavyweight, a power hitter, a big time political animal. And Scott Borgerson is a man who left his family and his children for somebody like Ghislaine Maxwell. So I don't, you know, obviously it was the, the Ghislaine Maxwell connection that got them that meet. It was Ghislaine Maxwell that got them that invite to the dinner. I mean, it was four years after Ghislaine Maxwell went to Chelsea Clinton's wedding. And remember, there was also reports. I can't confirm them one way or the other, but why would it not be true, knowing Bill Clinton and and Ghislaine? But there were reports that Bill Clinton and Ghislaine were engaged in a romantic uh, uh, affair. So to think that these two 
weren't close to think that Bill Clinton and uh, Jeffrey Epstein had no business dealings, just like his little stooge uh, spokesman had to say. Well, that's very, (laughs) very, very naive. But Scott Borgerson as a whole and on the whole, yeah, he had no other choice here. You know, this is the sort of thing that you can't survive. You know, we've talked about this a lot. You could survive having an affair. You can survive leaving your wife and your kids even. But you can't survive being associated with human traffickers and people who abuse children. Once that gets into the airwaves, once the people know that, and once people understand that that occurred, there's no coming back from that. There's no rehabilitating your life. There's no fixing things. That's it. You're a scumbag for the rest of your life, pal. End of story. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. And if you have sent me email in the last uh, five, six days, I'm trying to work my way through that. I took a day off of uh, answering email on Tuesday, so I'm still trying to work my way through uh, a bit of a backlog. So I am trying to get to those as quickly as possible, and as soon as I can, I will have them all answered. All right, everybody. Hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll be back later on.